Yeah, all these idiots were out there uh, just screaming and yelling and uh, proud, proud. You and I have talked a bit bef- about it before. No, please. What are you proud of? Right, uh, exactly. I, I didn't you, say that yesterday because I was a coward, but right. uh, <laughs> what the hell are you proud about? Right. I, I mean, you know, I heard two or three people this morning. We don't have to hide anymore. I mean, it's been a long time. And not that there aren't still prejudices out there. Of course there are. There's plenty of folks out there that are still Neanderthals that want to beat you up because you're gay. But the idea that you can't come outside anymore, you can't do what you want to do, especially here in New York City. I'm not sure how they'll treat a gay guy, for example, in Clarksville, Tennessee, or across Wisconsin. But in New York City, in Queens, the idea that you're, you know, you're so enthusiastic and so joyous because you're going to come out because you're gay, let's face it, that was a long time ago. It was, and and, and even uh, across the country, it is mainstream. It's accepted. There's, there's, there's it's not like it was. Uh, and plus, even then, w- what are you proud of? I mean, okay, you were, you're, you're oppressed, but uh, not necessarily. You're fighting the cause. That's good. But right now, as you point out, there's no cause. There's no nothing. So you were born gay. Great. I was born hetero. Uh, somebody else was born uh, confused. I don't know. But uh, there's no reason to walk around. You didn't accomplish a damn thing. No. Just by virtue no. of being born gay. I think you act, and I think they actually annoy people. I, I say this all the time. Sometimes they run the risk of taking somebody, for example, who's not homophobic uh, in terms of what happens between blacks and whites. Uh, sometimes they'll take somebody, like the BLM uh, nonsense, they'll take somebody who's not a racist and turn them into one. Not making excuses, trust me. Not making excuses. People should be a lot more tolerant and tougher than that. <laughs> but when you start to shove this stuff in people's faces, they start off becoming a little annoyed, then they get really annoyed, and then they hate you. That's the bottom line. Uh, that is the bottom line. It, it does happen again. You, you know, you overplay your hand, and uh, there is backlash to, you know, that type of thing. You, you, you said it, shoving it down your throat. I mean, uh, your throat hurts. You can't breathe. It's like, stop. <laughs> Stop. Get off me. Oh Leave me God. alone. Well, there was an example of it this weekend in Major League Baseball. Again, the Yankees are playing so great, and the Mets had that uh, split with the Dodgers this weekend. Probably the NLCS preview, the Mets and Dodgers. But the Tampa Bay Rays, very good team inside the American League East, took on the Chicago White Sox, played a doubleheader on Saturday, and they held the team's annual Pride Night on Saturday night, recognizing the LGBT community. So when the Tampa Bay Rays have this Pride Night, they ask their players to wear patches. You know, the rainbow flag and all that nonsense. And, uh, well, long story short, a lot of the Rays players said, no, I'm not wearing it. Which I think is great because they they should have the, uh, you know, the opportunity to wear it if they want to. Just like a mask. If you want to wear it, great. If you don't, this is America, don't wear it. So a lot of Rays players opted out and did not wear the Pride Night logo on Saturday, and that doesn't make them homophobic. That doesn't mean they don't like gay people, which, of course, is going to be the the initial reaction. What it means is maybe like you and I, they've had enough. Right, but uh, don't feel like there isn't the pressure on some of the other players who probably say in their minds they were like, I really don't want to put this thing on, but they felt pressure to do so because of, well, for obvious reasons. Sure. You want endorsement deals? You're not going to get one if – you know, the, the, they, they used to call them the gay mafia. If the gay mafia is coming down on you for not, you know, not uh, acquiescing to uh, everything that they want. But a lot of the, the there were five Tampa Bay players and they each of the five invoked religion. So they, uh, you know, they had some sort of cover. But if you're just the average Joe who's like, leave me alone, please. Uh, you, you You are the guy who's going to get screwed. Even the religious guys will probably get screwed in one way, shape or form. Because, uh, again, the, the gay mafia is a real thing. Uh, that's why you have what you have going on all across the country. It's the same thing with BLM. When the, uh, when the gay mafia speaks, and, and it was a couple of a, a scant, a scant a few months ago. Now BLM has fallen out of favor. But uh, Black Lives Matter, well, you know, all the corporations fell into line, donated money. That's how Patrice Cullors uh, financed her yep. mansions, because of corporations. Same thing with the gay mafia. Uh, same thing with those players. They felt pressure. 
And a lot of the, a lot of the other ones, I'm I'm sure they thought I don't care. Yeah, put it on. I'm right. Not, no big right. deal. But other other sports is the same thing. There's, I'm sure there's plenty of athletes in the National Football League that took a knee because of the pressure. And uh, Aaron Judge, who uh, by the way is having one of the most unbelievable seasons. <laughs> this guy right now is far and away the best player in Major League Baseball. Yeah, tell it to Miguel Andujar. <laughs> But the way Judge uh, treated Josh Donaldson, who ironically knocked in the game-winning run for the Yankees yesterday with a sacrifice fly, he also doubled. Uh, you know, there was some pressure there, too, I would imagine, just maybe even for himself from the Yankee organization and folks in and around it. I think a lot of players these days, and we saw Drew Brees do the same thing, and just an unrelenting amount of pressure inside the Saints locker room, and he turned back on what he initially said. So all these guys, you know, they do come across this pressure, and it takes a very special person to say, well, I'm not going to worry about it. This is how I feel. Most, I believe, Bernie, most will eventually cave. Uh, agreed. Agreed a thousand percent. If there's money to be made, you know, why die on this hill? I mean, listen, yeah, put the patch on or, uh, you know, throw Josh Donaldson under the bus. Who cares? I'm not going to sacrifice uh, the, the fortune, the millions that I can make in the future for this particular, you know, except with the exception and I'll say that, and, and I'm not making excuses for them at all. Uh, I'll say that with the exception of Drew Brees. What he did was particularly uh, cowardly and egregious. But for the rest of them, like, uh, like even, uh, uh, even Judge, or maybe Judge should, just should have shut up. I don't know if he, he should have volunteered those comments, but maybe he was under pressure even, to, even just to say something. I don't know. I really don't know. But nobody else said, pretty much said anything on the Yankees. It was just Aaron... Aaron Judge. Right, well, he's the best player. He's a superstar. So. so he would be the guy, right? He would be the guy. Uh, by the way, they did make a point of this, though, trying to somehow tie in people showing up with wearing gay pride pa pa patches on the uniform. Saturday's attendance for the Rays and White Sox was about 19.5, which is more than the average attendance, which is just under 17,000. After the Saturday night uh, game on Sunday, less than 11,000, actually 11,000 showed up. So 8,000 people less showed up on Sunday than Saturday. And I guess, I guess they're trying to tie it to a lot of unhappy fans. I don't buy it, but that's what they're trying to do.